Welcome to this episode of the Smart Leader Cell Podcast. I'm Jessica Lorimer, sales coach and leadership expert, and we are officially on day four of Sales In For Summer Challenge. <laughs> so over the last four days, we have been exploring some, frankly, really simple sales activities that genuinely will help you skyrocket your sales ability, help you create your income predictably this summer without having to worry about where you actually are, if you're on holiday, if you're not on holiday, and doing too many things while you really should be spending your days out in the summer sunshine, enjoying time with family, with friends, all that good stuff. So as I've mentioned a couple of times on the podcast this week, we are shooting this week for the iTunes top 100 spot in the business and marketing category. So if you have been enjoying the challenge so far and you're like, yeah, just is okay, maybe maybe I'd like to do something for her for running this challenge for free. You know, I feel like I've been getting a lot out of it. If you want to go ahead and share the podcast with anyone who you think would love to listen to it or would, who, who would get value, or you want to share the challenge, or you want to drop us a review, or you want to hit the subscribe button on iTunes, all of those things count apparently. According, <laughs> according to the iTunes gurus to help us get into that top 100 space. So if you are feeling pretty generous this morning on day four and you're thinking, I could take time out of my day, just five minutes to write a review, to share the podcast on a social media platform of your choosing, then please do. It would be hugely appreciated. And like I say, there will be a download episode talking about whether or not we actually got into the top 100 why we wanted to get into the top 100 and the strategies that we use to try and make that happen. So if you want to participate in that and just give me a little bit of a hand, that would be lovely. If not, it is day four of the challenge. This is here to completely help you make the money that you want around the lifestyle that you want this summer. And we are on day four. And As I mentioned in yesterday's episode, I'm a little bit nervous about this one because it's not something I've ever talked about. And in fact, it's something I've been relatively disparaging about over the years. (laughs) So, you know, today we're going to talk about energy and, and sales energy specifically. So if you are somebody who knows exactly what I mean when I'm like, today your task is all about energy then you can go ahead, you can do today's activity. I'm going to tell you what that is in a second. And you can go on over into the Facebook group, share your results and use the hashtag sales in for summer because points equal prizes. The more times you share the hashtag, the more points you get and the more points you get, the better chance you have of winning the prizes, right? So it all makes, all makes sense if you are participating with us regularly. So today's activity, for those of you who are all up on the energy bandwagon and know exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to sales energy and when it comes to the intentions that you're going to be setting for yourself this summer around how you're going to sell, your activity is simply to assess your current energy levels, compare them to how you felt last summer. Did you feel overwhelmed with the children? Did you feel frustrated about having to go on holiday? Were you worried about running the business or the sales that you were or weren't making? Or were you really happy-go-lucky? Were you making a ton of money? Was, did things feel easy? Were you uh, what would be called in flow? You know, assess that from this year in comparison to last year. And I want you to think about how you can raise your energy levels through the roof this summer. I know that everyone has a lot on. But I want you to really think about how can you replenish your energy? You know, how can you get yourself into a headspace where you're actually feeling really good? If that's being around people, perhaps it's about booking the ticket to that conference or, you know, it's going out to that networking event or it's just going out on a night out on the time with your mates. Or if it's being away from people, you know, is it scheduling in some hermit time where you can just read that book that you've got your eye on, watch, you know, the handmaid's, Handmaiden's Tale, is it, on the old... TV box, you know, whatever it is that you can do to really give yourself the energy boost that you need, replenish your energy, and make sure that you have really solid, happy, excited energy throughout the summer is going to be perfect. You know, so for me, it's always about having daily time outdoors, but for you, it might be looking at different types of self care, journaling, 
you know, spending time with your audience, spending time with other people, time out entirely, whatever that is, I want you to go away, write down those activities that you're going to do into the Facebook group. And for extra points, write down why you feel that's going to make you a better salesperson this summer. Now use the hashtag, obviously, and you know, you, you will get your points counted. If you want some ideas, please ask away in the Facebook group. I'm happy to brainstorm and do all that kind of stuff too. For those of you who are thinking, okay, Jazz, what the F? <laughs> and I wouldn't blame you if you were because I am the least woo person you will ever meet. You know, for me, I, I kind of come out in a rash when people start talking about the universe. I'm like, oh, not, not sure, not sure. You know, for me, this is a new, not a new topic to me. It's something that I've used in my business over the last few years, but probably haven't talked about all that often. And I want to share the, the kind of way that a practical, like a solidly, solidly practical and inherently logical and scientific person applies this idea of energy and intention to the results that they're going to get. So that's what this episode is going to be about. So if you are someone who's like the idea of talking about energy or the idea of talking about the universe or anything like that makes you cringe, please keep listening. <laughs> I know it sounds weird, but honestly, I'm going to explain it in a way that, you know, makes it sound logical and that your brain is going to be like, oh yeah, okay. She's not just off talking about how you can, you know, dress up in a clown suit, run around your uh, local area and, and hope for the best and hope that's going to make you more money. That's a genuine experience. I'm going to share that in a sec. So that's what's on the card for today. We're going to talk about the sales energy that you need, how you can create that, even if you're not going to be selling live at all this summer, and how you are going to be setting your intention for the summer ahead and how it's going to make you more money. So my name is Jessica Lorimer. I am a self-confessed anti-woo member. I don't know whether that's a thing, but if it's not, I'm going to make it up. When I came into the online space, I saw people talking about mindset and energy and the universe and connecting to source and being in flow and all these kinds of things. And A, I didn't really understand them. B, I was kind of like, oh, if you talked about that in corporate, someone would have put you in, in a room by yourself and asked if you were feeling okay. And C, I didn't really understand, you know, why people were putting precedence on, on this kind of stuff before they were actually looking at, you know, is, is my business working? You know, and I saw a lot of people and I have seen a lot of people over the years get really, I'm going to use this word, it's a strong word, but let, let's stay with it. I've seen a lot of people get conned over the years with, well, you just need to feel better and then suddenly everything will fall into place. Now, that's not true, you know, and, and I'm not, you know, this episode is not for me to bash mindset or anything like that. It's really not because obviously it's all, it's all about how you're going to use it to, to make these things happen. But the experience, what I'm trying to say is the experience I'd had around this mindset, this woo kind of world over the last four years has not been a positive one. And in fact, there were very, very few people who I knew and respected who actually did this mindset stuff. And I was like, mm, okay, well, if they're doing it, then, you know, maybe, maybe I should be looking at it. And so over the years, and it has taken me four years to become open-minded, to actually look at, you know, the scientific principles behind certain things and, you know, look at what I actually believe and the lengths that I'm prepared to go to and the lengths that I'm not. So if you're expecting this to be an episode about, you know, I'm going to find a full moon and a unicorn and, you know, write down a ton of stuff and burn it on a, a flaming pyre of Viking-esque proportions, that's probably not, you know, where I'm going to go. That's, that's definitely not my comfort zone when it comes to the woo. Equally, my comfort zone when it comes to the woo is not putting crystals in my bra. Um, it's probably, I don't, I don't think I own a crystal anywhere. My comfort zone when it comes to the woo is things that I can prove scientifically or have experience that maybe I can't prove scientifically, but can say, I have had a guaranteed experience of this. And I can tell you that it does make a big difference, but I cannot explain why. Okay. I am not the expert in mindset. I'm certainly not the expert in energy or the universe or anything like that. So I don't want you to kind of be listening to this and, and expecting a massive lesson around, you know, why Napoleon Hill is so famous. 
but instead use the stuff I'm teaching you here. This is stuff that has worked in my business, that has worked in my clients' businesses, and that genuinely is really important, not only for your sales success over the summer, but also for your sanity. So you'll find that a lot of this is just practical and actionable and is going to save you a lot of time, help you increase your energy during a time of the year that typically we can be really lethargic and that we can find quite challenging and, you know, help you make more money. So let's dive into one of the oddest experiences that I've ever had when it comes to the woo. Now this is, I promise you, relevant to your sales strategy this year. So about 18 months ago, somebody approached me and said, I'd love to get to know you. They, they were, you know, a competitor of mine. They were also working in the business coaching space. And they said, I'd love to have a chat with you. And when people say that to me, I'm always a bit like, mm, what do you really want? So I, I went back to this person. I said, look, always happy to connect with people. However, if it's a pitch, I'd rather you just told me. And this person said, no, 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 no. I just, I really just want to get to know peers in my space and da, da, da. And I was like, okay, cool. So we hop on the phone. Almost an hour and a half later, this person is trying to pitch me their, I don't know, one to one, three month coaching package and is pretty irate at the fact that I'm just like, I have no interest and I don't want to buy it. And the reason that I didn't want to buy it was because for the first 45 minutes of the call, this person gave me the thinly veiled sales pitch and didn't listen to what my needs and wants were. Now, I'm a very, very practical person, very practical. When I started out in this business space, for me, it was about what business strategies can I use? What can I implement? What can I see? What can I touch? What can I feel? What is real? And I was always very honest about, I don't understand the woo. I, I don't really get it. I don't know how it works. And so when this person approached me and, and for 45 minutes had been telling me things like, yeah, so I think that you need to get over your ego. And to do that, what you're going to do is you're going to put a bunch of face paint on, you're going to dress up as a clown and you're going to run around the streets in your local town screaming, I'm a star, I'm a star, I'm a banana. That was just too far out of my comfort zone. It was just too much. And I, A, was really freaked out about it. B, was really hacked off because they promised me it wasn't a pitch call. And C, was like, yeah, this is everything I hate about this, this world because there is absolutely no friggin' way that I am going to run around my local street screaming, I'm a star, I'm a star, I'm a banana, whilst dressed like something out of a 90s children's TV show. So you can explain, like you can see from that, that my feelings about the woo <laughs> diminished. Any kind of expectations I had or anything that I sort of thought or felt about it or had been open-minded about up until that point, completely closed. I was like, this is clearly something for, you know, people who just will believe anything, like gullible people. And after that, it took me a good six months of, you know, really avoiding that kind of experience and removing those kinds of people from my newsfeed because I was like, yeah, no, this is just not, not for me to actually even think about the idea of energy ever again. Now, this wasn't my first rodeo, okay? When it came to energy, I'd worked in corporate for a long time and we didn't call it energy then, okay? We didn't call it energy to land the sale. We called it adrenaline. We called it end of month. You know, we called it close of business. We called it quarterly close off. And actually those were the sales periods that I get really excited about. Oh my God, you know, things are happening. This is so exciting. I've got to close every deal. And I had this natural expectation. Things are going to go well because it's coming to quarterly close off and I'm ready to do it. I'm ready to hit my target. I'm ready to go overboard. I'm ready to get that commission. Woo, woo, woo. You know, but we didn't call it energy. And we certainly didn't look at you know, setting intentions, full moon rituals, anything like that. You know, as, as far as it went was, you know, you kind of walked in first month of the quarter, first day, and your boss would be like, right, your target is 100 grand for this quarter. Where's, where's the money coming from? And from that point forward, you'd be like, okay, uh, mm, 
trying to work out mm, which, which client's going to come through, how much is that going to be worth, what margin are we charging or whatever. But we certainly did not call it energy. So when I went into the online space and everyone was like, right, okay, read this book by Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. I kind of read it and I was a bit like, okay, fine. And uh, I did some research around it and you know, there were lots of conflicting viewpoints around whether Napoleon Hill actually had those experiences and wrote that book from his experience or whether he'd actually stolen the idea from somebody else. If you haven't read that research, I mean, you can go and have a look. To be honest, if you're a big Napoleon Hill fan, probably don't because it, it's a bit disheartening. But, you know, if you're somebody like me who I like to know where things have come from, you know, I'm not the sort of person who sees a meme on the internet and goes, oh, God, that must be true. Um, <laughs> so I, I went and did some research. And whilst I was researching this Napoleon Hill book and, and kind of finding out various different bits and bobs about it, I also started finding different you know, different mediums of people talking about things like energy and things like mindset and things like resilience. And I was like, actually, you know, this is fairly similar to what we have on the sales floor. You know, on the, on the sales floor in the corporate world, we often talk about resilience. You know, we often talk about rejection. We often talk about getting into the zone, right? The, the sales zone. You know, we, we talk about that adrenaline high. We talk about that experience of intense joy when a client closes off on a sale that you've been working on for months because you know that it's finally over and that you're going to get paid. These are not new concepts to me, but we did call them different things. And so for me, it was really interesting to see that people suddenly, you know, where we would have goals in corporate, people suddenly had vision boards. And I was like, oh, okay, well, you know, this is, this is nice. This is pretty jazzy. And I started delving into the world of, People like Brad Yates, who, you know, was doing lots of uh, EFT videos on YouTube and, you know, his EFT videos, you could tap to get more clients. And, and whilst I was a bit like, oh, does this really work? You know, I gave it a go. I also gave Abraham Hicks meditations a go. That was a bit of a mistake, actually. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I could not get into Abraham so for anyone who's an Abraham fan, I'm sorry. The voice, however, Esther Hicks's voice, super relaxing. I used to lie on my floor and sleep for like 30 minutes. And I'd be like, oh, this is nice. And she'd be talking about like the cosmic universe. And I'd be like, oh, snooze. <sighs> and, and wake up 30 minutes later feeling phenomenal. So, you know, whether or not that's the point of it, I'm not sure. But then I had this really odd experience, this really odd sales experience with somebody who was pitching me something that I was just like, I am not your ideal client. And in not being your ideal client, you've done two things. One, you have really annoyed me. And two, anything that I was open-minded about, I'm now very close to because I've had this really bad experience or what I felt was a bad experience. And so it took me a long time. And it wasn't until I picked up Danielle Laporte's White Hot Truth book, somebody actually bought it for me. It wasn't until I picked that up that I suddenly kind of thought, yeah, no, this thing might not be too bad. And I was reminded of this yesterday because I was rereading it in time for this, you know, in time for this challenge because I was thinking, right, I'm going to record the episodes and I'm going to be talking about the book. And so I was rereading it. I left it out on my coffee table. And my friend James came over yesterday. We were going for lunch and, you know, I was running typically late. He turned up. I was still in my pajamas. I was, I'd been doing client calls and, and just couldn't be bothered to get on my PJs, quite frankly. And so I'd said to him, look, I'm just going to go and get changed, sit in the living room for, you know, 10, 10 15 minutes. I'm going to get changed, brush my hair, brush my teeth, do all that kind of stuff. And I'll, I'll see you then, play with the dog. And when I came out in close, he went, I've just been reading this book on, my, on your coffee table. And I was like, oh, right, yeah. And it was, it was Daniel Laporte's White Hot Truth. And he said, oh, I really like that. Now, you guys don't know James, but... James is, again, eminently practical, has worked in procurement for a long time, you know, in the DIY industry. Okay. So, you know, his things are, I know about bricks. I know about drainage systems. I know about anything to do, you know, with, with hanging stuff on your wall Al alongside, you know, his actual core skill sets of work, which are things like digital marketing and you know, are we buying the right stuff that our customers are actually going to then purchase from us and, and things like that. So he's a very, very practical person and not spiritual. Okay. Not spiritual, not woo, isn't in the online space. And so he was like, yeah, I really like this book. Yeah. I, I liked what she said about, you know, going to the like yoga retreat and, and coming out and seeing the, the guy who was running it, smoking a cigarette. And he said, yeah, this stuff's great, but don't take it too seriously. 
And we went out for lunch and, and we were talking about the book and it was, for me, really interesting to hear it through his first read eyes, you know, and he'd only read 12 pages. So, you know, we weren't, <laughs> weren't discussing these concepts in depth, but through his first glimpse eyes and, and he'd had the same reaction that I had. Huh. That stuff sounds kind of cool. If you don't have to take it too seriously, if I'm not going to have to, you know, sit down and meditate for hours every single day to, to reap the effects, maybe it's not so bad. And it got me to thinking, you know, our conversation got me to thinking about the things that have made my business so successful during typically dead times of the year. And obviously, a lot of it is strategic, okay? I'm not going to lie. A lot of it is strategic. A lot of it is the stuff that we've been covering off this week around, you know, are you planning effectively? Do you know what time you actually have? Have you created content that's actually going to go out there and sell stuff for you when you're not there? So there is that strategic element. And obviously, there's a strategy we're going to be talking around tomorrow, around the best sales strategies that you can use for the summertime specifically. But there was also this nagging little voice in my head that was like, well, it's not the only thing though, is it? And it wasn't. You know, I, I realized fairly swiftly that strategy wasn't the only thing that I'd employed over the last few years to make my business successful during typically dead times of the year. You know, other things were around these topics that we've discussed this morning. So resilience, you know, I, I was absolutely unafraid to go out and put out offers when nobody else was putting them out. And I wasn't afraid of rejection. I wasn't afraid when people said no, because they were like, oh no, I'm too busy in the summer. I've got no time and you don't understand what it's like and blah, blah, blah. I wasn't worried because actually my brain was kind of like, there's, there's always going to be somebody else. There's always going to be somebody else who'll buy. You know, I also realized that actually my energy over the summer is, is really high. You know, I don't get as tired. I'm not as ratty. And I would say, <laughs> I would say that that's because the majority of my summers are spent relaxing, but actually they're spent replenishing the energy that I've lost over different parts of the year. So, you know, what I mean by that is I'll be spending that time traveling. Traveling is something that really lights me up. I, you know, when I travel to different places, when I see different cultures, when I get to learn bits of different languages, I get really excited and I get inspired and I'm motivated. And so actually, even when my content is automated, I'm still doing things live. I'm still going into my groups. I'm still going into my communities and I'm sharing these bits of inspiration that I've learned and I'm, it's not tiring me out and I don't feel at all resentful of it because I'm excited and I'm happy, and I'm sharing things I think are going to make this big difference. And, and for me, that really, again, it, it lights me up, right? It brings me joy. So I started thinking about this, and I was like, well, you know, one of the reasons that I sell so much, even though the majority of what I sell during the summer is automated, you know, it's through the kind of content we were talking about yesterday, it's through things being scheduled, it's through, you know, working on challenges like this, or masterclasses, and, and those kinds of things. It's not stuff that I'm running live and not running tons of live launches or anything like that, even though it's all automated, I still make the most money. And I firmly believe that it's, it is to do in part with this, this energy thing. So whilst I can't explain it, you know, in, entirely as somebody who is a specialist in mindset would, you know, I'm not going to sit here and be like, right, okay, you need to connect to the universe and you need to find your flow and all that kind of jazz. Because I don't believe that that's how it works. I believe it's about inspiration and then taking action on that inspiration. So for me, the energy thing is about replenishing your energy to a point where you can be inspired again and then taking action on that moment of inspiration. And I was actually talking to a client of mine about this last night. One of my clients, Anne Louise Harbour, she is very spiritual very woo, but she's super, super practical. And we were having a Dottie call. She's one of my Dottie members and she's amazing. And I absolutely adore her. And we were talking about this last night around epiphanies. And, you know, she's having a Dottie call. We're talking about a few things going on in the business. And I said, you know, for me, everyone, every single day is, is having an epiphany or they're having these moments of inspiration. The problem is that sometimes when we're so burnt out, when we're tired, when we've got no energy left, we don't take action on those things. So that moment of inspiration, that, that epiphany, that thing that you're like, oh my God, that's amazing, that amazing thought, you don't even recognize it as being amazing anymore. You don't even recognize that it's inspiring and therefore you don't take action on it. You don't get any results because why would you? 
you didn't recognize it, right? Because you're burnt out, you're worn down, you're thinking all the time, next strategy, next sale, next this, next that. Now, for me, the summer is the time that I don't do that. Because I've planned, because I've got my content scheduled, because I've you know, thought about how I'm going to be nurturing my community even when I'm not there, because I've done all these things. Actually, it's the time that my brain just gets to rest. And that alongside Christmas is when the majority of my ideas and the majority of my inspiration hits. And I'm like a little, I don't know, content creating machine <laughs> because my brain finally relaxes. And when it relaxes, it's like, woo, Jess, look at all this other cool stuff you could be doing right now. And I'm like, oh crap. Like, <laughs> so I have a rocket book and I take it everywhere and I write things down and I took it in Google Drive. And when I come back, I'm ready to rock. So what I want to talk to you about is the process of how I do that and how you can do it so that actually, even if you've got a summer that is filled with, you know, mean in-laws or that is filled with holidays you don't really want to go on or that is filled with screaming kids or, you know, things that you don't really want to do, but you feel like you have to and all that kind of stuff. This is the recipe, I guess, of how I keep my energy really high. And what that actually does for my sales success. The recipe that I use to reset my energy, if you like, for summer is all around firstly setting the goal. Now you might, if you are already an advocate of the woo, you might know this as setting your intention. Okay. So I, at the beginning of the summer, I set the intention or I set the goal for what my summer is actually going to look like. You know, what's going to happen when you know, what I want to feel like, how I want it to pan out. So for me this summer, you know, the things that I've got, you know, if I I have somebody who was going to have a vision board, then the things that I would have would be travel because I'm very, very committed to traveling this summer. I firmly believe that new places, new environments, new cultures, new people bring new ideas and fun. And so for me, travel is a big deal. The other thing that is a big thing for me is family. You know, so one of the things I really want to do this summer and I set the goal to do every single year is spend some time, quality time with family, with my family, with Sam's family, you know, and and make sure that we're actually kind of holding on to those relationships and, and making them better and spending quality time together and actually enjoying that. So that's on my list. And then the other thing is my goal around sales. For me, my goal for selling this summer is that it will be easy and that I've done everything that I need to do to this point that means that when I come back to the business actively in September, I'm going to have had a really good launch for whatever it is that I choose to launch. I'm going to have had a really good summer where people have, you know, new people have come into my audience, where they have found my content, where they are consuming it, enjoying it, where they're buying automated products or they're buying into things that I'll be running in September, you know, and I'll be replenishing my energy through really coming away from a lot of the active work that I'm doing and actually spending my time serving my community, serving my existing community, serving my membership you know, making sure that they are the ones that I focus my time on. So for me, that's the first bit. I look at, okay, what is my goal? You know, what's my goal for personal? What's my goal for professional? Quite frankly, summer for me professionally is about being as lazy as possible um, and doing as little as possible. So, you know, July, yes, July for me is, is generally pretty busy because I'm preparing for summer. But the rest of it, August, zero is is kind of getting done from my brain okay and on a personal level it is about that travel it's about spending time with family it's about spending time with friends it's about doing the things that are going to you know make me feel like a good person and also give me the energy to keep going through september october november and december for the rest of the year okay so that's the first part i set the goal the second thing that i do when it comes to my energy over the summer is i look at okay if I've, set the, if I've set the goal or if I've set the intention that things are going to be easy and that my brain is going to be clear and that I'm going to be happy, how am I going to make that happen? Like what are the, if, if the inspiration is I want to make things easy and I want to be happy, 
what are the inspired actions I need to take in order to make that happen, in order to keep in that frame of mind, so that when I come back, I genuinely do feel relaxed and happy and like I've had a break. And for me, those things are always around spending time outdoors. So again, it kind of ties into this travel thing, but you know, it's, it's about spending time outdoors, going and doing something. So you know, whether that's planning a hill walking trip, whether it's going camping and you know, hiring a fire pit with our friends and you know, doing that kind of stuff, whether it's just walking the dog, going out for a daily run, swimming, whatever that looks like for me, the inspired action is, okay, I know that if I go out and do one thing outdoors every single day this summer, it's going to give me that brain space that I need, that clarity that I need, and it's going to make me a happier person and also probably healthier because let's face it, if I'm actually outdoors, I'm probably likely to do some exercise. Minimum, I'll be walking. Maximum, I might be doing something a little bit more strenuous. So (laughs) So actually, I might lose a couple of pounds in the process and be like, oh, actually, this is great. So think about that. What's the inspired action that you are going to take that is going to get you and keep you in that frame of mind of, yes, I'm confident that I have set myself up for success. Yes, I want to spend this summer with it being easy, with me being happy, with me being relaxed, whatever emotion you choose. And then finally, the thing that I do is commit to that. Okay. For me, Committing is about writing something down or saying it publicly so that I can stay accountable. So for me, one of the biggest things that I will be doing to commit to that is writing a note to my community and being like, hey, these are the times that I am going to be off. This is what's going to happen during that time. This is how I'm going to continue to serve you during that time. But ultimately, these other times, I'm not going to be around and this is what I want you to do and this is how I want you to maximize that opportunity. Okay, so for me, it's about having something written or something that I've said so I can be publicly accountable. So I want you to to have that moment of commitment too, you know. And if that is, you have a specific sales goal. So if you've got like a 10K sales goal over the summer or a 5K sales goal or a 100K sales goal, it doesn't make any difference what the number is. You know, I want you to commit to that and to, you know, either write it down, you know, to you or to talk about it publicly with your community or to tell your partner, spouse, you know, family about it and say, look, you know, this summer, this is the person that I'm going to be. And this is the goal I've set myself personally and professionally. You know, so for me, I might turn around to Sam and be like, you know what, this summer, I'm going to stop being a complete rat bag. (laughs) I'm going to stop being a complete rat bag. And I am going to be, you know, I'm going to basically show up and be really relaxed all summer. I'm going to work at these times and the rest of the time, I'm going to be able to spend that time 100% with you in the present, in the moment, traveling, being outdoors, doing whatever it is that we're going to do. And, you know, I'm committed to hitting this sales goal. So the things that I've planned in order to hit that sales goal are X. And actually just being able to say that and knowing that you've created the plan, knowing that the action is there, regardless of whether you're actively doing it or whether it's passive through you know, email marketing or scheduled content or whatever, is really helpful. And it puts you in that frame of mind of, actually, planning this out is worth it. This is going to happen. I'm confident in my ability to make this happen. So today's task is about assessing those energy levels, comparing them to last year. So if last year, if summer last year for you was terrible in your business, I want you to look at, okay, Last year was crap. This year does not have to be. What can I do differently this year in terms of strategy, what we've done over the last four days? And what can I do differently in terms of energy that is going to make me feel good, that is going to make me feel really confident about the summer, that is going to make me feel really confident about my goal and executing my plan. Okay, so in the group, you can go in there, you can write out your revenue goal if you would like to share it with us. You can tell us what's going to be the thing that inspires you, what's going to be the action that you're going to take and how you're going to commit to that. And then obviously use the hashtag sales in for summer. And if you do need any ideas, any inspiration, anything like that, please just give me a shout. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to help all week. Tomorrow, we are going to be talking about specific sales strategies that are the best ones to use for summer. So if you're somebody who's like, Jess, I've done everything you said during the challenge. I've assessed my time. I've looked at 
you know, the, the business model I want to have, I've created the content. Now I'm sat here and I'm giving this energy stuff a go, even if it's not my jam. Tomorrow is when we're going to talk about the best summertime sales strategies and how you can implement them in your business. So if you are somebody who, you know, hasn't really got an idea yet of how you want to launch or how you're going to do it on auto or anything like that, you feel a little bit uncomfortable about sales over the summer, or you're not really sure how you're going to make your plan work, tomorrow's episode is going to be absolutely key for that. Now, obviously, we are aiming for that iTunes top 100 spot this week. So like I say, if you do enjoy the challenge, if you are a regular listener of the podcast and you do want to help us hit that iTunes top 100 spot, I would personally really appreciate it and love it if you could do a couple of things for us this week. One is to review the podcast and let us know how we're getting on because that counts with the iTunes gods. And also share it around, you know, share the challenge, share the podcast with anyone that you think it would be relevant to or your social media on a social media post or something so that new listeners can find the podcast so that they can subscribe and download the episodes too. And obviously there will be a whole download episode on did we actually ever get into the iTunes Top 100? What happened? Why did we do it? And what strategies did we use? I will see you in tomorrow's episode where we'll be talking all about sales. If you need my assistance today, please go into the Facebook group, use the hashtag, I will be there to help you. And I can't wait to see how you get on with today's task. I'll see you tomorrow.